Hey, HCDA, and today we're going to go and expand into a lot of new technologies that we have now unlocked since the last time around. We unlocked Green Science, and that actually opens up pretty much half of the technology tree to us. So this is going to be once again one of those episodes that's probably going to turn out to be like 20 minutes, even though it's like three or four hours of work to do all of that. However, there is a lot of busy work going to go on in between as well, because if you look at this hornet's nest in between my facilities over here, this is the original um, Xenoferrite, I think it's called, production. As you can see, we're actually excavating that at a hugely rapid rate, and that's going to mean it's going to run out sooner rather than later. So we're probably going to need to actually unlock access to this one, which is a little bit further down. Uh, we might also need to bring in some Xenopharite from over here. But we are also going to be bringing in Olumide from this location over here as well. Long story short, we have our work cut out for us, so let's get to it. As a side note, if you're wondering how I'm actually flying around, if you press Alt-U, this actually turns on the camera tools and this allows you to kind of fly around your base if that's what you want to do. Now, honestly, I wish I found that out a little bit sooner, or at least I tested it out a little sooner, because it makes actually giving uh, yourself an overview over your base and kind of uh, planning out what you're going to be placing where a lot easier than doing so from the ground. So, something to consider if you're still building your own facility as well. It's also worth noting that you can actually fly around really quickly with your camera options as well, at least if you want to get to some other part of the landscape. And if once you do turn off your camera, as you can see like this, you actually just drop to the ground wherever you were. So you can kind of use it as a cheaty way to kind of fly around and skip to the other side of the planet if you need to. Uh, honestly, I haven't really been using it all that much, but it is something that you might find useful in case you have to travel a larger distance. Right, but first things first, I actually wanted to produce 8 green signs per minute in the previous episode, but what I forgot to do was actually increase my steel production. So as you can see over here, I now have 4 crushers making steel and a total of 6, no, 8 smelters making the actual steel. So I moved up my steel um, deposit a little bit, my steel depot I should say. and. Long story short, I'm just producing about twice amount uh, of steel that I was doing before, just to make sure we are actually producing those advanced machinery parts. So when it comes to the technology tree after you unlock green science, you can pretty much split it into two halves. The first half is going to have to do with a lot of stuff you can actually produce on the planet itself. And then the second half is going to be related to actually connecting to the space station that you can see flying in little pieces up above. Now, the goal I have for today is pretty much clearing out the first half of all of that, which is going to include, uh, I think, half a dozen new type of resources that we're actually going to have to produce. And finally, what I want to aim for at the end of this episode is using all of that in order to produce energy cells, which are going to use a couple of new types of resources as well. But specifically, that's going to allow me to make solar panels. And solar panels, along with batteries, are basically going to ensure that I can make my base completely independent of any fuel-based type of resources. Although it's not going to be particularly easy to do that, but it's a nice goal to have and that's what we're going with. Now, given the amount of stuff we have to do, this is probably going to be one of those episodes where we uh, spend something like three or four hours or even more making stuff. And then this is going to be like a 20 minute episode making it look very easy. But um, yeah, it's just how things are with these automation games. Now, uh, first things first, I have a couple of smelters in the back over here, which are getting in some gravel and those are making glass. As you can see, it's been producing for a little while. It's actually producing pretty quick as well. And all I'm doing is splitting a little bit of the gravel that is coming in. Now, in order to make sure I have enough gravel for all of that, I did add in some more of these crushers making gravel. So now I have a total of eight, I believe. One, two, three, four, yes, eight assemblers making gravel. So I'm actually making a fair amount of use of all of that mineral rock coming in. The next thing we're going to need is this olimite and as you can see over here it looks like just another mineral but actually it's a type of liquid that you drill out of here. So we're going to need to set up a new drilling type of installation. In order to access the olimite we're actually going to do some pumping with a pump jack as you can see over here. 
Now the pump jack actually needs to be connected to a high voltage power network, so you can't just put it on foundations. Uh, it kind of makes sense because it's actually drilling into the floor, but even just leaving a hole in the foundation doesn't do the trick. I tried. Um, so no, you do have to actually connect it to the high voltage grid. Now initially I thought, well, I'll just put down a transformer, put a power pole in between, and that should work, right? Um, well, apparently not, because apparently the transformer only transforms high power voltage to uh, low voltage power, but not the other way around. Why? Gameplay, I guess? Uh, but either way, in order to actually get this power, it will need to bring high voltage power directly in from the source. And I actually didn't notice before, but that moon is actually moving. Hmm, that's interesting. I thought it was a static object like the uh, planets uh, the planets i should say that we have over there but no it's actually moving that's kind of nice okay so that means i had to bring in a power line all the way from my turbines all the way around here and through this little pathway i created and yes those lights are not necessarily uh vital but i do like the way it looks and then all the way down here to my pump jack and then now if I do hook it up, let's see, we should be seeing some um, fluids moving through our pipelines now. Yes, we are now actually mining some oleomite. Actually transforming the oleomite into something that is actually going to be useful to us is one of my favorite processes in the game so far. Not necessarily because it's very complicated, but just because it looks really nice. So, first of all, the oleomite is going to go into this distillation stack over here. As you can see, we're just putting the pipe in here. And then that's going to produce the oleomite into liquid polymers and waste gas. Now, waste gas is exactly what it sounds like. It's a gas that we have no use for. So we're actually um, draining that from this facility over here and then that's being burned off into the atmosphere. So yes, we are causing once again a huge amount of pollution on this planet, but it's a factory game. So let's just deal with that. Um, that waste gas is not really what we want. We want the liquid polymer and the polymer is going to go into these chemical plants over here. So you can see the, uh, the piping running in between over here. And then just uh, siphoning enough between all of these different buildings, you can actually um, fuel a huge amount of these polymer facilities, which is one distillation stack, which is really interesting. But anyway, uh, this is where we're now starting to produce the liquid polymer into polymer boards. So it's a very straightforward process, but it does require a new type of resource. And it also means that we have to transport some of our stuff into our main base which is a little bit further away it's not a massive amount of distance but we are definitely expanding in this part of the game bringing in those polymer boards all the way from my facility over here into the corner over here in my existing base i can now combine that with the electronics parts production that i already have with three mark ii assemblers in order to start making some circuit boards now the circuit boards are not something we're going to need in huge quantities just yet, but it's nice to have the production already start because we have those resources while we work on the other stuff that we're going to need. Well, speaking of steel, just a few minutes later as I was trying to progress to something actually new, I found out that my steel production just fell quiet completely. And as you can see, this belt of miners is not doing anything anymore because the underlying deposit over here is actually slowly running out. Well, not slowly because we've been mining it from several different directions. And also the um, xenoferrite going into the cement production is actually going to run out pretty quickly as you can see there is some stockpiles left in here but the miners are no longer mining and the couple of um, miners in the back are already empty so we're going to need to fix that luckily we do have a second deposit really close which we can now access because in the meanwhile i did the research to unlock the deeper mining now when I say deeper mining, I do definitely mean deeper mining because as you can see the xenoferrite ore all the way down, it actually takes a little while for the ping to get there, is at the height of 68 while I'm currently at the height of 135. So it's actually 60 spaces down, actually slightly more than that. Now if you're wondering how deep you actually need to dig, well the answer is quite far down because I'm now standing at a bottom of the tunnel down to that deposit well uh 
quick tip if you're going to go down this far and you're blasting your way down of course you're not manually digging your way down make sure you bring some ladders because getting out of here is going to be really annoying if you actually need to diagonally go up from here so just make sure you have plenty of ladders so you can easily climb out again um, yeah, also bringing up the resources from this particular location is similarly not really going to work if you're going to do that diagonally. It, well, it does work, you could actually do it like that, but there's a smarter way. Now as before, you can just set up your mining facilities over here. You need some way to power it, so again I just recommend building a uh, horizontal, sorry no, vertical type of foundation in order to connect it to your main grid. But in order to actually get the resources up there, we're going to use the freight elevator and that's a thing that's actually really easy to use so you first just place the bottom down in the actual place that you're transporting the items from as you can see you get these kind of lasers pointing upwards which make it really easy to identify where you're going to have to place the top of the elevator and then when you make your way back up you can still see those lasers pointing out and the actual top end of the um, elevator will actually uh, snap to this grid so that's really easy to place then you just place it on the height that you want and once you do the actual elevator itself will start digging into the floor so there's no way to cut out this manually it will take a little while for the digging to actually complete but this basically means it will actually dig its own way to the actual resources down on the bottom and then once you have all of that up and running as you can see the actual elevator built itself and now we have some resources flowing in there and the resources are being transported up now it's just something to keep in mind that there is a limited speed to the elevator uh, initially it seems to be able to handle approximately one mark two belt so if you want to export any more than that you're going to need multiple elevators so I have connected up everything I need to the elevator. So I have a belt going into the crushers over here that are making the more improved version of Xenoferrite that is going to go into my smelters. Then I have a belt of the normal stuff actually going in here, which is now combining with the remaining a little bit of mining I'm doing down here in order to scrape the bottom of the barrel over here for my original deposit. This is going to run out pretty quickly, by the way. Uh, but basically this is going to go into the steel production facility. So now my steel is back up and running. I still have all my plates and stuff like that up and running. And well, we're pretty much good to go and continue where we left off. And since we have these brand new miners here anyway, we might as well upgrade them to Mark II. Because with the circuit boards we're now producing, we can actually craft that. And as you will see, look, we now have... For some reason, the Mark 1 assemblers are red and they turn yellow when you upgrade them to Mark 2 and the miners go from yellow to red, so the other way around. But anyway, we have the Mark 2 miners up and running like this now as well. They're just a little bit faster, but they look exactly the same and function the same way as well. So remember when I said we could continue where we left off? Well, I actually left the mine and everything in my factory turned off, as you can see. All the lights are off, nothing is functioning anymore, so apparently we have a power problem. Turns out the problem was the Ignium mine over here that is um, quickly running out. I actually moved all the miners a little bit further down now because they couldn't actually reach the bottom part of the ore anymore. Uh, as you can see, they're still not doing anything and that is because I have to manually restore the power now. Of course, turning back on the facility is pretty simple. Just throw in some things like biomass or whatever else burns into the existing power facilities that we have. Those will start producing a little bit of energy. Then the Ignium miners will start up once again and the Ignium is transported back into the power producing facilities to produce more power. That will keep working until once more we run out of Ignium. Because right now this tiny little deposit that is actually running out is the only burnable fuel that I have other than the biomass which we don't want to be collecting by hand and uh, you can actually grow it just in case you notice the greenhouse but the um, the tutorial actually tells you which is actually pretty good that producing biomass through the greenhouse costs more energy than it will yield so something to keep in mind the only reason why you might want to do that is if you want to start producing some things like explosive uh, because you also need biomass for that so that allows you to automate that type of production but you can't actually automate power production like that so keep that in mind um speaking of power i 
am dreading the moment we actually run out of the Ignium deposit over here. So we need the, those solar cells up and running ASAP. Side note, I decided to put up some railings because I actually really like how these look. And they just uh, make your factory look a little bit nicer. And yes, I know you can remove this, but we're kind of leaving this as a testament to the early start of the game. So next on our production list is some more oleomite production, but in this case we're trying to make the gas. And in order to make the gas, that's actually pretty straightforward, just, just put in one of these machines, um, put the crude oleomite in and we'll get the gas out. Again, we are getting waste out, so we need one of those burners over here in order to take care of that. But once we have that up and running, we can take the gas and some ignium powder, which is basically the refined version of ignium, some water, and then we can make oleomanic Oleumic acid, oleumic acid. I don't know how to pronounce this, but acid. Let's get, let's go with that. Uh, if we have that acid, then uh, let me bring up the technology tree over here. There we go. Uh, we need the acid in order to combine that with everything we are already producing in order to make the energy cells, and then we need the energy cells in order to make the solar panel. So we're almost there in terms of actually what we need to produce. The one problem is we need Ignium, and I just told you we're pretty much out of that already, and we need water. Uh, we're producing the Olamide over here, so that means we're going to have to bring in water from somewhere, or we need to bring the Olamide to that, but one way or the other. I think it makes most sense to bring the water to the Olamide and then whatever we're producing here to the main base. Um, and we're also going to need some Ignium, and we do actually happen to have an Ignium deposit in this direction as well. Just one problem, the Ignium ore is all the way down here, like under the water. So honestly, I like how the game is designed like that, because uh, building underwater could be really annoying, but basically it works almost the same way as you would be building on top of water. Not every building works on the water, but the miners actually do, so there's no downside to that. And you can make an elevator, so all we need to do is drill a whole way down. Okay, so a very large hole in the river bedding brings us all the way down to this resource over here, the Ignium. And the water behaves really strangely in this cave, because you would expect this cave to actually run full of water. You can actually see the water streaming down. But then it actually treats this like, like it's just normal space. So, I don't know. It makes it easier to move around, so I'll take it. But it's a little weird, honestly. It looks looks kind of weird as well, as you can see. It's like sheets of water, but if you move into there, it's actually solid water. Uh, which is actually quite convenient, because it makes it really easy to move up and down this, uh, this shaft. But, yeah, still a little weird. Anyway, let's set up some miners. And once you set this up, it actually works really nice. We, we, we kind of have this oil dragging type of facility standing here in the middle of the ocean. Uh, well, ocean river. And what I've done is I've just built a, a path basically from our olimite facility all the way down here. And then in the river so we can actually make the... Um, connection over here and we can have easy access to power and things like that you could do the same thing just using power poles as well but honestly i i like this because it also helps you kind of um, remember where everything is you have an easy way to get from a to b you might need to do some demolition in order to actually set this up so it's a little bit of time investment to save some time later but now we have two elevators connected all the way down so i'll actually show you uh, i have the this whole bar here supplying the power down here. We have some Mark II miners. And then everything is feeding into these two elevators. Yes, I am using two elevators because the limited throughput of these things is kind of annoying. Um, so now we have a lot of Ignium ore available all the way up here. Which means we have one very long belt running over here to bring some Ignium to these crushers over here to make the refined version of that, the powder version. And then that is feeding into this machine over here. So now we have two of the three resources we need to make asset. The only thing remaining is some water. Which of course is pretty straightforward as well. So I just built a very long pipeline over here that I'm going to connect down here into the water. Now what you can't actually do, and I'll actually show you, because that was my initial uh, way of thinking. I was like, well, why not just... Uh, remove some of this, this, this ground over here and then have the water flow to me rather than having to pipe it. But... Let me show it to you properly. Uh, if you blow this up, the water does flow a little bit, but it doesn't actually fill up this whole area. So you can't actually create your own rivers or canals or anything like that. So you do have to transport water the hard way. 
In order to make the energy cells, we actually also need some xenoferrite plates. And as you noticed, we were actually running out of xenoferrite as well pretty quickly. So I figured while I'm at it and while I'm here, I might as well set up another mining facility that I went all the way down for over here, which is this node over here in between the nodes that we already have access to, to just get a whole bunch of xenoferrite running. And again, just setting up two elevators to do the exact same thing. Takes a little bit of time, but this will actually last for a pretty long while now. For each Mark II belt of resources coming out of these elevators, we are using a total of eight crushers to refine that ore or that rubble into ore. And then we have a total of 18 of these smelters making the plates. So now we are producing a huge amount of plates. I'm piping in the water over here along with the igneum and the plates. And of course, every now and then you do need to put a pump in the piping. Otherwise, the uh, the um, traveling speed of the fluid or whatever you're trying to transport doesn't quite catch up anymore. We are now producing some acid over here. We're bringing the plates over here so we can actually start bringing everything together. And all that hard work brought together looks something like this. So we have the pipeline of acids, but that is an actual pipeline, so it's not a belt. We have some plates, way more plates than we need, but hey, there's no such thing as having too many of these plates. We have the glass, which in hindsight, I should probably not have built all the way in the back over here. So now I'm just bringing it back here on a belt. And some electronic parts, very basic stuff that we were already producing. So we can now make use of these fluid assemblers. So these are assemblers, but they're specific assemblers that also have a fluid entry, as you can see in the back over here. And then we can combine four different types of resources to start making some energy uh, cells. And those energy cells allow me to make the most awesome thing ever, and that is solar farms, as you can see over here. Now, these small solar cells are actually the least efficient out of everything you can do with solar energy. Later on, we will be able to make larger version of, versions of these that do not only produce more power, they're actually more efficient as well. Right now, these are not moving with the sun or anything like that. So if you check the... Uh the controls you can see the angle of the sun actually influences how much output these things are generating but it's free energy as long as the sun is shining uh, you do need quite a lot of these things for this to actually be worth it so as you can see there's a whole farm of this going on and i also included a whole bunch of batteries again batteries are created by the same materials that we are now producing and what these batteries allow you to do is basically do exactly what you would expect charge up so once the sun goes down, these can actually start discharging and thereby still providing you some of that solar power during the night as well. Now, you definitely do not want to remove your um, turbines or anything like that. Basically, all the power production that you already have, I would just leave this there. The game does prioritize using the free energy over the existing energy. You can actually tell it once you check out the grid status. Um, so over here you can see that the solar panels are generating about 10 megawatts now. Uh, that's not enough to supply all the power, but the steam turbines are just supplying about 2 megawatts of power now. So I'm using a tiny bit of ignium to power those steam turbines. But other than that, most of the power is coming from the solar panels. The batteries are still charging, so they will start discharging once we do not have enough power to function uh, during the night, for example, if we need it. Um, I also still have in the low voltage grid the burner generators and, st and stuff like that. They're still there up and running, which you can see they are actually prioritized last. So these are just standing there not doing anything, even though they do have access to fuel um, and will only kick in when it's really needed. And all of this means that not only did we actually complete the goal for this episode, we also progressed a huge amount through the technology tree. Everything up here has been completed, most of the things up here as well. I actually did complete everything I can currently research except for the mining efficiency that I am almost done with now as well. Uh, and after that we need yellow science, so we need another type of science. And honestly, it's now not that bad to start producing that. There's a couple of things we need, and actually this is where a very interesting mechanic comes in, because we are going to need a resource for this, which is called Fermerlite Bars, which we cannot actually produce ourselves. We are going to need to uh, retrieve them from space. So if you're wondering how that works, make sure you tune in for the next episode. If you're still here, you're awesome and I do hope to catch you in the next one.